السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد إن شاء الله today we will take a brief demonstration of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's prayer what are the correct movements what are some of the misconceptions and what are the things that a person should say during his prayer when one offers his prayer he should make sure that he is upon proper wudu and he should make sure that they are facing the qibla with the correct intention and they should offer the prayer standing the first step would be to raise one's arms up to shoulder height or up to the ear height while saying Allahu Akbar a demonstration of that will be such as this Allahu Akbar then you will place the right hand over the left hand and that will be placed in the mid section the mid torso from this area up to the lower chest there are three ways in which a person can hold his hands the first is that you hold the wrist the second is that you place the hand on the forearm and you hold the forearm and the third is that you just place it without holding any of the forearm or of the wrist the position in which one places their feet, whether male or female, is the same. There's a common mistake that women do, and it's the same with their hands, is they will place their hands like this. There's nothing that states, that is reported authentically, that you place your hands like this for a woman. And the same with the feet, in which they place the feet together. Or a misconception that many do, is that they try to combine between both holding the wrist and the forearm by doing this which is incorrect. Hold the wrist, place it on the left hand, or hold the forearm. Once a person has done this, they begin by reciting the opening supplication, which is known as Dua al-Istiftah. One says, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa tabaraka ismuka wa ta'ala jadduka wa la ilaha ghayruka. After he does this and says this supplication, he will say, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim," seeking refuge in Allah from the cursed Satan. Then he will recite Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran, and so that you may be able to read along, we will read it slowly, and that way you can learn it as well. You say, "Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim." الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Then you will recite a short surah afterwards Any surah that you memorize from the Quran The next step will be that you raise your hands up to your shoulder length or again up to the ears and do not touch your ears while doing so with your thumbs as there is no authentic report of this so up to the shoulder or to the ear length a demonstration Allahu Akbar then one goes to the ruku' position and while in the ruku' position a person must make sure that their back is straight that their head is level that they are placing their hands on their knees their elbows are not tucked outward, rather they are relaxed inward. And while a person makes this takbir, he goes down into this position and he will say, Allahu Akbar. Then, while remaining in this position, you will say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. And you, say, you have to at least say it one time. You may say it two or three or four or five times, or any other amount that you feel is sufficient. After being in the ruku' position, meaning the bowing position, a person will come up and say, Sami'allahu liman hamidah, 
while raising his hands. And that means and translates to Allah hears those that praise him. Then you will place your hands on your chest. Now once a person raises his hands and says, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Allah hears those that praise him, he responds by saying, Rabbana wa laka alhamd, O oh Allah, to you is all praise. Now, there is a common mistake in which when some people come up from ruku' from this position, they will bring their hands forward, which is actually incorrect because you are not in a position that you are making a supplication. You're not asking Allah for anything. You are praising Him. So you just go through the actions by raising your hands here, saying, Sami Allahu liman hamida, Rabbana wa laka alhamd. O oh Allah, to you is all praise. In this next step, we are going to demonstrate sujood, what is known as prostration. Now, we will begin by going down on our hands first, then our knees. Sujood or prostration must be done properly. Forehead and nose, both hands, both knees, and the toes must be facing forward and they all must be placed on the ground. While in the sujood position, one must say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. A common mistake of sujood or prostration is the elbows on the floor, as you see here. Another common mistake is while making sujood, the stomach will be resting on the thighs, as you see here. So the main thing that must be done is that the, the thighs must be straight and the stomach as best as you can should be away from the thighs to the best of your ability. So the next step coming up from sujood, one will place his hands on his knees and will say, Rabbi firli, O oh Allah forgive me. Then he will proceed to make sujood a second time. Allahu Akbar. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Allahu Akbar Now on the second rak'ah or the second unit of prayer for those prayers that have only two rak'ahs or two units of prayer one will recite the tashahud The wording of at-tahiyyat goes as follows Now you recite it as you are looking at your finger while making the tashahud your hand and finger should be placed in this fashion as it has been reported by the Prophet peace be upon him in these ways that you make a ring with your thumb and middle finger or you place that slightly above or to the side of the middle finger these are the most authentic ways that has been reported in regards to moving the finger it has been reported that one should keep it firm and should move it regularly. It has also been reported that uh, these hadith were not as authentic, but because of the difference of opinion, either one will be fine, either to keep it straight or to move it up and down. And you will say, At-tahiyyatu lillah, wa salawatu wa tayyibat. As-salamu ala al-nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi as-salihin. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ This is known as At-Tashahud. The next supplication that you will make is known as the Abrahamic supplication or Ad-Dua Al-Ibrahimiyya. And whilst the finger is still raised, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. وَبَارِكْ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِ مُحَمَّدْ كَمَا بَارَكْتَ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمْ وَعَلَى آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمْ إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ Now, lastly, is the final supplication in which you seek refuge from Allah or you seek refuge with Allah from four matters. Now, these four matters are the punishment of the grave, the punishment of hellfire, the trials of life and death, death and the trials of ad-dajjal and you will say allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al-qabri 
ومن عذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا والممات ومن شر فتنة المسيح الدجال And with that you will have concluded all of the supplications that one says while seated. Then you will turn your head to the right and say Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah And with that you will have concluded your prayer. In the prayer that consists of four rak'ahs, on the very last seated position, a person sits in what is known as tawarruh. It is demonstrated as many of the mistakes that you will find in the seated position is that a person may sit such as this, or this, or this. And the correct one will be this. Now, one important note that we need to pay attention to is that when praying in congregation with the Imam, you have to make sure that the Imam's movements are always before your movements. So the Imam makes taslim, or the Imam raises his hands, you don't go with him, and you don't go before him. You go after him in all of the movements. Wait until he's completed it, then make your movement. This is a common mistake that many people are unaware of, but it's something that the Prophet, peace be upon him, strictly prohibited. One brief example is when the Imam will say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. While the Imam is doing that, you should not move as soon as they move. Rather, wait until they've completed the full pronunciation of Assalamu alaikum, then you should move right after they have finished the second Taslim.